Hello everyone, welcome back to some more Prismata. Uh, this is going to be another one of those episodes where I review some interesting games that I played on Ranked while off camera, and it will also serve as uh, an introduction to a couple of the new units that were added to the game since the previous episode. Uh, if you've been playing Prismata and you're watching this live, then none of these units are, are a surprise to you. This video is coming out like a week after the units were released or something. But uh, for me, it's not so long ago, so these units are still relatively new to me. Um, and you'll notice I highlighted a game that I lost here because I thought it was pretty cool. Um, and it also happened to be right before a win against the same player, so why not throw it in? So we have these three games to look at. Um, this one I thought was neat. Not like... As you can see, there is a new unit in it, Bombarder. But I... I liked this game because I finally felt like I did something good with Lucina in the set. Normally, when Lucina is in the set, I just fall apart. Um, and so, again, since we're doing one of these analysis videos, now's a good time, if you want, to pause the video, try to figure out a plan here. Welcome back. I guess I should have had you do that before I told you that Lucina was relevant, right? But, uh, okay. So... The thing is, like, is Lucina playable here? Um, I always have... It took me a long time to get over the feeling that Lucina is, like, super vulnerable and fragile, right? And that if you commit to Lucina, you get punished by aggression. Uh, this is... It's true, but if you can get Lucina down on the table and survive for just a turn or two, she builds her own defenders, right? It's really quite amazing. And... So the obvious, the, the other obvious play, anyway, the point of all that is that Lucina is somewhat fragile, but she helps a lot with defending herself. Um, so the, the obvious, like, something kind of playable you could try here is there's just like a pretty decent red rush, right, as player two. Um, Grimbotch and Perforator kind of do a lot. Um, throw that into Fastimus and like the line shouldn't be a total mess. Um, but with Zatron and Ebb Turbine, well, Ebb Turbine is a very good reason to go blue. It helps out the blue player a lot, and uh, a Fastmas player won't have access to Ebb Turbine, and they'd really love it, right? Zatron is good defense, which will also punish the, the Red Rush. And then there's this new unit, Bombarder, which you guys have probably not seen yet, unless you are playing Prismata regularly yourselves, of course, and then you probably have. It's, uh, it was... When it was teased, uh, Elliot called it a big rhino, uh, which is sort of what it is, right? Eight blue, blue, red. It attacks for three and has stamina two, and it has four health. So if it were prompt, it would be like absolutely insane, disgusting, way, way better than like rhino. Uh, or, well, most things are way better than rhino. But this would be like, I don't know, if it were prompt, it would be the best unit in the game. Probably not, but it's still really good. It's like a, a competent defender, attacks for a ton. If you can get a train going, it's like really powerful. It's also a useful threat. Like you can threaten to attack with it, but then hold it back to get the defense. It's pretty flexible. So Bombarder also sort of fits into a kind of higher econ red-blue mixture, right? Another reason not to go uh, turn to Animus. So my thinking was, there's all these things encouraging you to get somewhat high econ. Um, and Ebb Turbine will be really great. Well, and, and, and Lucina is like, hey, uh, it would be great to have high econ to protect Lucina, right? So my thinking was like, if you pick up green and then blue and then two red, you can maybe get Lucina in that way. Um, and then you can use the Ebb Turbine clicks to stabilize while Lucina, or to stay alive while Lucina stabilizes. And you can probably get a Zatron at some point too, which is like a stupendous defender. So what I did was just um, natural conduit here. My opponent went red first. I think that's sort of fine. Well, no, I don't actually. It's a little bit more reasonable as player one than player two, because it's a higher econ red first. But it still doesn't get you easy access to blue, and blue's really important because of Ebb Turbine. 
You could skip Zatron if you wanted, but I don't think you can skip blue. So I just do this. My opponent builds a couple Tarsiers, fine. We get the Ebb Turbine, keep droning. And he throws in Grimbotches right away to start just hammering on me hard. Fine. But with Ebb Turbine click, I can put down a wall and repl replace one of the Engineers and still get the two Animuses. And I carefully, like, how much money am I going to have next turn? 22, because I'm definitely clicking the end. This is just enough for Lucina plus wall, right? Um, and with the Engineer here, that will protect against the maximum damage my opponent could possibly create, which is 6. So I know I'll be able to, to defend and not be breached while still getting a Lucina. That's a really important part of like why this turn works, is because you plan ahead to the next turn, And, like, the defense is perfect. And look at this. We're coming up on five green. So we're going to get the Zatron now, right? And, like, okay, not granular. But that's one nice thing about Zatron is... On turns when you defend with Zatron, you don't really need granularity. Because he is perfectly happy to accept the extra health. Right, if this were an energy matrix, or an infusion grid... It would be wasteful to defend wall while absorbing two on grid. But Zatron never absorbs, he just heals. So he takes two damage instead of three, and he's like, yeah, great, I love it. Um, and we're already getting perilously low on drones, right? Down to 12 income per turn, um, plus head turbine clicks if we need it. But the opponent's green botches are sort of dying out, and Lucina is coming online. Here I actually bought another Perforator to speed up how fast I can get out of red and how much defense I have available. Um, because I just don't have enough money to spend all this tech. And this Grimbot maybe should have been a Tarsier. I don't know. Um, but like you can see the chilling effect that Lucina had. My opponent's having to build like more defense, he's having to sack Rhinos, and his Grimbotches are about to die off, so he needs to do something. And what he does is transition into Bombarders. And I would like to take every chance I can to not absorb on Zatron. So here, um, I'm holding a Perforator back to absorb onto Wall, although I suspect he'll be holding back two Grimbotches, so I can just Wall onto Wall. And I don't know, like he gets a Bombarder, and things are a little bit dicey here, but... Honestly, like, despite the fact that I'm only on 10 drones, um, Zatron is generating a ton of health per turn, Lucina can generate health per turn if I need it, uh, I'm actually able to spend pretty much all of this tech. And I just need to survive, like, early Bombarders, and I'm fine. So, I don't know, this, this game, like... There's not any super instructive, like, this is the main theme of the game, but I was really pleased to get Lucina out and discover, like, how well she works, even with a pretty low economy, right? You have 12 drones to spend GBRRRR, which is, like, pretty nuts. Um, but the perforators let you spend all the red as attack, and then you're just spending GB, which is a little bit tough. Um... So I'm, I'm actually not spending the green. I'm just basically saving it for force fields. Um, but it's nice to have force fields, right? And I actually like threw in a gas cannon eventually once I got to 12 income. So this was a cool one. I was excited to get Lucina properly and uh, really strange economy grass because this is where I started like having to click ebbs and then suddenly I didn't have to anymore for a little while. Anyway, that was a fun one. Game two was against McFly, who is now the highest rated player I have ever defeated. He was in like the top 20 or something like that. Um, and this features another new unit that you guys have not... Oh, two new units, that's right. That you haven't seen uh, if you are only being exposed to Prismata through these videos. So let's look at them. Uh, first, Mega Drone. So it costs five and three energy, and it's basically four drones all bundled up into one. It gains four per turn, it has four health, 
Um, so it's it's a drone, it's a big old absorber if you need it to be, um, as well as being just for income. But of course, I didn't mention the one like super important fact about it is that it costs four attack, as well as the five and three energy. So it's sort of an absorb denial unit like Blood Rager. Uh, you can you try to get to four attack and then build a mega drone to uh, deny your opponent absorb and build up your economy instead of building up your sword economy. Or maybe do both, combine it with a Blood Rager, right? Maybe you Blood Rager on three and then two more Tarsiers come in and you're on seven, let's say. Uh, although I guess that's pretty hard to do. But something like that, anyway. And then you could Blood Rager plus Megadrone. Amazing. Um, and this one you have seen. I uh, previewed this unit in early field. It's a green prompt defender that sort of plays around threat pretty well. And then there's also Bombarder. So they have, uh, during the opening weekend of these units, they have their frequency turned way up in, uh, in matchmaking games to give players a, a chance to try them out. Uh, okay, so... If you'd like, take a moment to pause the video here and decide what your build would be. Okay, welcome back. So, um, as you saw, this is a game that I lost. Uh, what was my thinking here? I actually don't remember. What, what, <laughs> what did I do? Maybe I should just analyze the set uh, again. Um, my thinking is, is this a high econ game? Uh, well, Bombarder is a big absorber but it's a pretty difficult one to get to. And if you have Bombarder, like the game is a lot higher pressure. It's not just, you know, an infusion grid, right? It's an infusion grid that threatens to attack for three. And so it sort of makes it hard to get these in games where, well, I don't know. Once Bombarders have been purchased, there's a lot of pressure. And so it's sort of hard to be high economy, I think. Um, my thinking was like, hey, uh, Ebb Turbine is good. I don't know if I actually got any of those, but I was thinking like, you know, okay, Lance Tooth and maybe Megadrone, I don't know, are ways to deny Absorb. And I, I don't actually remember what my plan was this game. Yeah. My opponent, oh yeah, I was gonna, right. I was getting Vivid into Blood Phage because that's just like good. Blood Phage Tarsier turn two is, is amazing. Uh, my opponent went even faster with Vivid Animus Player one, so he can't get Blood Phage Tarsier. But Blood Phage is so good that even just getting it is fine. And he starts adding in some blue. I add some blue and like you were you know, defending with rhinos. So I'm up on attack and we're tied on drones, but he's ahead on tempo. So it's very, you know, kind of typical stuff going on so far. And he ends up not getting the Lance Tooth, which really surprises me. I thought this was a good game for Lance Tooths and this was a good spot for a Lance Tooth. He gets a Hannibal. Which is basically saying, like, he's going to stop me from ever getting 7 attack. To get a Hannibal this early, um, you really need to stop your opponent from ever killing it, generally. Uh, and I'm pretty low econ, so that could be a problem. But it seemed to me that with Lance Tooths, you know, I can quite efficiently build attack that arrives eventually, right? Attack that arrives next turn is useless, there'll just be a Hannibal in the way, so... Lance Tooth is just like a two damage splitter I can build. Um, but I'm having trouble defending. I have to build this like Rhino. And he builds more Hannibals, which makes sense. You know, he's sort of committed to keeping me down. And I just get more Lance Tooth. So it seems like it's going okay, although I have to hold a drone. I've now got like sort of enough attack lined up that I'll eventually be able to kill a Hannibal, although not next turn. Right, this is four, five, six. I just need to have one Rhino available next turn. And so I build a wall and a Rhino and hold back the Lance Tooth since its attack wasn't doing anything anyway. 
I've even got like a better absorber than him, right? This game seems to be going okay, I thought. And I have to override Q and say, no, 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 keep a rhino alive, not a wall. Um, and I have seven. Great. But he's built so many uh, Hannibals, I don't know, that, that I'm still under a lot of pressure. And I can kill these Hannibals. Uh, right, there goes another. But now, my... The Rhino I've been using to attack is down to zero stamina. So in order to still have seven attack, I'll have to absorb on Rhino instead of on Wall. Uh, which feels pretty bad. But like, I, I eventually do it. I get through all the Hannibals. And I'm like, I did it! I won the game, right? But, no. Like, I have six attack. And he has more. And also a bunch more drones. And also a better absorber. <laughs> uh, so, I guess this was... What happened in this game was that normally the, like, Hannibal Rush is not really all that great. Because they, they can get to seven attacks sort of in a reasonable time frame. And they're denying you absorb on all those turns. Uh, I think that this was playable because it arrived so early, right? The, the vivid... It's like a turn two animus into Hannibal. You shouldn't have enough economy for that, right? Um, but the yeah, the presence of Vivid and Bloodphage both meant he had a lot more economy to play with, right? Uh, and and can get the Hannibal as early as turn five, which I don't know. It doesn't seem all that early now that I say it. But being able to consistently produce Hannibals on turn 5 is pretty cool, I think. So, I don't know, that's that's a thing to keep in mind, is that the Hannibal Rush is better if you can get it out faster, of course. I mean, everything's better if you can get it out faster, right? But I didn't see this one coming. Maybe if I could have just gotten my own Hannibal, I would have been fine. I don't know. And uh, this last game that we're going to watch is against the same player, and it contains the final new unit rela released this um, in this latest patch. Uh, plus, of course, Bombarder again, which has been in like every game. Uh, this is Photonic Fibroid. It costs three green red. It's a prompt blocker with two health, and it sacrifices itself for two damage at the beginning of your turn. So there's a lot of ways you can use this unit, right? You can play it kind of like a protoplasm, uh, use it as your absorber, and then attack with it. That's a very high aggression way to play this, right? You, you're not actually absorbing on anything. You're just, like, getting extra attack instead of extra health. Kind of like a Feral Warden or a protoplasm or whatever, but, like, even more so because it's two damage right away. Very, very fast. Um, you can use it as just soak, build it as like a more expensive force field that lets you keep a drone. Um, you can use it to play around threat. Like let's say your opponent, in, in, in much the same way you can with Rhino, let's say your opponent is attacking for 10 and you have 9 health, but like they don't really want to click their doomed mech or whatever, right? So you think they'll probably just attack for 8, but of course you have to defend for 10 just in case. Um, so you build something like this, which is available if they choose to attack, uh, but if not, then you can, you, you can use it as soak or as your own threat. And so Photonic Fibroid sort of counters itself in a way, right? Like, one player builds it to play around threat, and now suddenly they have a threat for the other player to play around. Um, kind of cool. So, what's the deal in this set? Um, I think that... We, we both sort of wound up... Well, hang on. 
If you'd like, take a moment to pause the video and figure out what you would have done. There you go. I caught myself in time. Gave the camera a thumbs up just there. Uh, well done. So there's like not really a ton of defense here. Well, that's not true. There is kind of a ton of defense, right? Innervi Field, Doomed Mech, Corpus, Fibroid, Bombarder, Colossus. These are all units that can defend somewhat well. And many of them also attack, right? Bombarder, Fibroid, and Colossus are... Uh, and Doomed Mech, right? These are all like attacking defenders or defending attackers. Um, but my, my eye was drawn here to Amparilla. Chrono Filter is a great synergy with Amparilla because it's a way to get up to three red without having to commit to four. And you also don't have to commit to it every turn. You can just do it at, like every other turn. It's a, it's a much smaller investment. Um, and it also lets you get access to blue, which Amparilla loves. You love to be able to build walls. So my first thought was like, how do you get that? Um, I'm player two again. Fastimus is probably not right. Um, you need a little bit more economy for Amparilla. It's a big, big unit. Um, and I said, well, what if we got like a natural conduit first, right? DD, DDC, and then DD2. Um, that gets us access to Innervi Field and Force Fields and Fibroids, all of which are pretty good as ways to defend, which an Amparilla player loves. And it also gives me Arms Race on turn four, which is not amazing. Um, but as a first attacker, it's quite good and quite cheap. And it gives me like a, an, a, an absorber and an extra Tarsier. So that was kind of my thinking was do that. And then you can get like an Animus to start producing Tarsiers with. And then whenever it's convenient, I didn't think this far ahead, like get an Amparilla. So I didn't think far ahead enough to figure out exactly when you get the Amparilla, but you get an Animus and then maybe two turn. Yeah, I guess actually, If I had thought more about it, I would have realized that the only possible way out is what happened in the game. Is you go like DD, DDC, DD2, 3, uh, and how much money do you have at that point? 11... I don't know. You, you have, I believe, enough to build Arms Race plus Animus. And then you can start building Tarsiers, and then the turn after that, it's like, well, gosh, I better build an Amparilla. So, that's sort of what happened. My opponent didn't go for green. He went for red first. Seems fine for player one. It's a higher econ thing and you can get started on the Tarsiers. But I definitely would like to have access to green this game. And so we throw in this Chrono Filter and indeed we have 14 uh, money so we can get the Arms Race and the Tarsier. Uh, the Animus. And, you know, the Arms Race isn't really attacking much yet, but it will eventually. Uh, did I actually do this? Oh, I did. Interesting. Yeah, so instead of um, holding back the Splitter to absorb two or three damage, I clicked it to deal one damage and get out an Innervi Field. Uh, absorb on that instead. I don't know if that's really such a great idea. But I wanted to start chewing through those engineers to make it harder for him to get an Amparilla. Right, because he's threatening one next turn. Uh, and a three Tarsier Amparilla is fine. Um, it's something that I don't want to make easy for him to get. But he doesn't actually do it. He builds two more Tarsiers and gets a wall down. Yes, I see. That's his problem, is if he gets the Amparilla, he can't buy a wall. So he's a little bit lower econ here, right? Um, he needs to spend his first Amparilla turn getting a wall just so he has a good absorber. I got my Chrono Filter before my Animus. Uh, so the first turn I was not overteched and could get an absorber out as well as the Tarsier by you know, getting the Arms Race. And so he adds on two more Tarsiers, makes sense. He's now threatening a five Tarsier Amparilla. But I get the Amparilla first for three, 
And on future turns, um, I can build more Tarsiers. And this energy field has now been worth a total of four health. Not bad for four GG, right? It was sort of a, sort of a, almost like an infusion grid, but not quite, right? Because if it had been an infusion grid on this turn, it wouldn't have been able to absorb, right? I would have lost two engineers and a, and a drone. Um, and then I could take four next turn. But so it took two this turn and then two again next turn, which is kind of weird. What kind of, what, what unit in the game does that? I can't even like think of anything. It took like, it was two prompt health and two non-prompt health. Huh. Okay, well, kind of a cool, cool thing anyway. Um, was it worth, in fact, not clicking or er, clicking the splitter? I don't know. I guess clicking the splitter did kind of turn out to be a net negative, I think. It did one damage to him, but it did two damage to my Inervi field, right? And if I'd been able to not have that two damage on the Inervi field, then this would be at four now. And I could click my splitter now if I want and then absorb on the Inervi field then. And it would be alive for one more turn? Be worth five health? Hmm. And I'm getting down the first Amparilla, so I really value health, I think. Okay, well, something to think about. A nervy field health is worth a lot, in a way. Um, absorb is still better than pseudo absorb. I don't think it was worth it for me to deal one damage in exchange for taking two, now that I think about it. But okay, we got the first Amparilla down, and it only attacks for three, but you know, it's still pretty decent, and if we add any more Tarsiers, it'll become insane. He gets a husk to defend, so he can get an Amparilla, and floats a bunch of money so we can get, like, Ampo plus Wall, I assume. But I can defend on my Chrono Filter off turns with Inervi Fields, uh, which is a resource he doesn't have access to. Yeah, Wall Ampo. So he gets the first five Tarsier Amparilla, but I got one for three, and it's eventually going to have five, as long as I can stay alive. And now, like, both of us have way more attack than we can defend, and we start having to leave drones back immediately. So I offered him this gambit here. I don't know. Was this really worth it? My thinking was... Can he click that Rhino and still win? I thought the answer was no. And so, like, every dollar matters in an Amparilla game, and so I said I sh it's better for me to offer him this gambit than to hold a drone. Um, but... I don't know. He gets a breach, and he actually can defend. So I should have at least calculated this out and seen that he can get, he can get absorb. I can go back to defending, though. And it's sort of just like, at this point the game is over, I get a Tarsier and I can defend, so he loses. Um, but let's look at how the game would have gone if I had... Uh, not this turn, this turn. If I'd held back one more drone. Like, does this dollar hurt me somehow? Right, so first of all, I first was thinking, like, not only does he have to click that Rhino to kill me, but he has to have the Rhino be alive, right? The obvious defense is this, losing a Rhino. Um, and then my Gambit is fine. 
So in order to get this breach, he has to give up his own wall. Um, so he's sort of giving away three health in order to gain one attack, which does three damage to me. So it's like a you know similar sort of thing. But so because that is already so dangerous for him to do, I decided not to worry about it. But let's see what would happen if I had. Now he clearly doesn't absorb onto Rhino since the Rhino is not that great. He just absorbs a wall. And let's say clicks this, builds a wall. Two drones sort of defends. I can breach, but it's probably going to be pretty expensive for me. Uh, what can I get? I can get a wall. Corpus. Eh, that doesn't defend. Force field. Hold drones. Yeah, I mean... He can't even defend by holding all his drones. I can click this, build force field corpus, which defends. Or maybe something involving fibroid. No, that doesn't work. Force field corpus defends, but that's fine. Or I could cut the corpus and do this. This leaves me with a wall and a drone. This leaves me with five drones, which is better. Yeah. So this wins pretty convincingly as well. Maybe I shouldn't have done the somewhat edgier line. Uh, either way, I should have thought about it some. But I liked this because... Well, let's leave and get back into normal replay mode. Analysis mode kind of is lame. Um... I liked this because it was an interesting display of chrono filter timing, right? Um, getting mine early to let me get out an arms race, which is both a defender and an attacker, uh, seemed pretty cool. And it also showcased the nervy field as like a useful defender, although I don't think I use it that well. Still got some practice to, to do. And we learned that a three Tarsier Amparilla is still pretty good. All right, cool. So uh, I think we do not have time for a match this episode. So I hope you guys enjoyed this little review of a few games that I played. And I hope you learned something as well. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.